morning guys so today I'm opening another battle box this one is for December 2018 seems like I just did one because I did I got the November box late and I forgot to post the video <laughs> so they're both this month but anyway uh, I'm inside because it is freezing outside with high winds and I don't feel like sitting in the cold uh, and this is a fairly small box so hopefully you can see everything just fine today is uh, EDC one of the last days on the mini Natrix from uh, Kershaw I'll do review on that eventually but actually as you can see the background here this uh, Christmassy uh, tablecloth this is going to be uh, changed out soon because of this knife um, I had a piece of foam on the table I'll give you the quick story and I was throwing the knife into the foam which I'm used to doing and uh, Christina wanted to try it out and she got her first try it was cool and then she tried the second time and it bounced off and literally landed on an angle like this and slice right through the center of this tablecloth. So if you see another tablecloth soon, that's why, because of the mini matrix. It is certainly sharp. And you probably shouldn't be playing with knives, but sometimes it's just fun. All right, so <clears throat> put that away and see what we got going on in here. Okay, right off the bat, without even looking at the card, you remember the Lord and Field uh, knife that we got a couple months back that was super cool so the second I saw that I, it reminded me of that knife so I'm very curious to see what that is so this is mission 46 gearbox all right you can pause there to see the breakdown of all the items sit rep is the right tools for the job so I'm going to keep this handy and close by so I can reference it if needed I will say I'm very excited about this one uh, we all love gear Right? I mean, if you're doing a battle box, you're probably into gear or you're a gearhead. So I'm very curious to see what is in this. This is basically anything goes, right? As long as it's a piece of gear. So right on top here, take a look at this Gerber. It's a Gerber flat iron. I already spoiled it by looking at the side of the box there. But anyway, we're going to take our Kershaw to open our Gerber. Because it's sealed shut there. Which is a good thing. Whoop, bunch of papers falling out. Hang on a second. All right, so it looks like an O-ring fell out from somewhere. I'll put that to the side. And carefully, well, first let's put this away. <laughs> Slide this out. See what's going on. Okay, so what's kind of funny about this, and we have a zip tie here. I'm going to use my multi-tool, which I actually have close by. Get this uh, zip tie off. I actually got a flat iron in trade. And when I do the review, you guys will see, well, I'll tell the story as to uh, how that came about. Because I was super interested in it, as you guys know, from previous videos. Put that off to the side here. And I thought it was super cool looking. And yeah, I'll get into that more in the future. But this has a different finish, I think, from the one that I have. All right, so here's the one that I have that I got in trade that I've been using. I broke it out because I thought it was a different finish, but it looks like it's identical. So anyway, yes, pretty interesting knife. I already have one, have been uh, using it. So you guys will definitely see a review on that in the future. All right, so let's put that off to the side. I don't know where that O-ring came from. I guess it's always possible that it was already on the floor. But anyway, moving on. What is this? Quick Seal Wound Care Spray Powder. Stops bleeding fast. Minor cuts, scrapes, and abrasions. That seems interesting. It's be awesome for the uh, Battle Song guys and gals out there as they bleed more often than other knife enthusiasts. But that's definitely a good thing to have. I'll certainly try that out in the future. What is this? OST. All right, operator survival tool. So flint rod, carbon scraper, and knife sharpener in one. Now sometimes, multi-tools like this can be pretty gimmicky. They're kind of hit and miss, some are awesome, some stink. So let's check out this one. Because usually it's either like, uh, you know, you have a tool that serves one purpose and is good at it, or you have the you know, jack of all trades multi-tool and oftentimes you're sacrificing the quality of those other tools by having a bunch in one, you know. But let's see, it has a plastic outer case. 
this unscrew? Yes, it does. So it unscrews. Oh, okay, I see. There's two rods in here. So there's a ceramic sharpening rod. There's also a flint, or excuse me, ferrocium rod. And then the tool in between both of them is your a multi-tool, essentially, as well as your scraper for that flint. Or excuse me, the, uh, I keep wanting to say flint and steel. The, uh, the ferrocium rod. So you have the scraper plus just the multi-tool here. So honestly, it doesn't seem too gimmicky. I actually think it's pretty cool. I like that they're small and compact. I'm assuming the other side unscrews as well to access the same thing. And I'm not sure why there's a hole in the end. Oh, that's, like, I guess, a bit holder. Looks like a standard bit holder. So, yeah, you could probably maybe put a bit in there or something for storage. Let's see. Let's look at this again. It's an AR-15 uh, carbon bolt scraper, survival multi-tool. It cleans all the critical surfaces of the bolt to keep it running. Uh, starts fires, sharpens knives to extend their usefulness. It accomplishes all this while staying the size of two CR-123 batteries to fit within common battery storage compartments found on common AR-15 furniture. So although this is being marketed as a uh, you know rifle tool, something you can keep inside like your hollow handles or something like that. Obviously you don't have to have a gun to use this. You can use all those functions and not even own a firearm. So pretty cool. I like it. I actually like that. All right, let's get to this Lord and Field because I'm very curious what this is. It says blaze your own trail. Or, oh, here we go. Lordandfield.com. I don't know why I didn't search for that first. I searched for that knife, but I couldn't find a website. There it is. <laughs> so after this video, I'm going to investigate more. But as far as that knife you saw last time, that might just be a one-off that was made for Battle Box customers. So let's put that box off to the side. What is this? I feel like this could be anything. This is a pair of safety glasses with a bunch of different colored lenses. Yellow, orange, red, light blue. And what is that? Silver. That's pretty interesting. Pretty cool. You guys happen to know that I enjoy shooting, so having safety glasses is always a good thing. And a couple of them that I wear are super cheesy and cheap too, so it's nice to have something like this. This is actually really cool. All right, tucking in the back here, I see a saw. <laughs> Which direction is it? Okay, Max Sharpness Durability Razor Tooth Saw. It's a 10 inch pruning saw. So obviously just for wood processing, I don't know if I've ever seen a pocket saw this long. It says it cuts up the six inch uh, logs. That's pretty neat. I don't know. Razor Tooth, is that the brand? Or is Max the brand? All right, so front and center, this is a bag. And I'm assuming, because I already looked before, to try to find that other uh, uh, glasses thing, Lordfield Dry Bag 20 liter. So that's what that has to be, $24.99 normally. And that's what this is. The dry bag, it's got a uh, strap on here, carry strap. So you have a thick rubber type bag. You put all your stuff in there and you basically roll this up as tight as you want. And then once you have it completely sealed, you can bring this over and connect that. All right, so it keeps all your, your gear nice and dry. Now, of course, there's a bunch of different uses for a dry bag. I'll tell you right off the bat, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll this up nice and tight. I'm gonna store this in the storage compartment on the uh, ATV that I ride occasionally. It's a family owned ATV. And uh, if I'm you know deep in the woods or doing something and it starts raining, especially if I have my camera equipment, it's not waterproof. I mean, if I have the GoPro, that's fine, but uh, oftentimes I'll be filming with my regular, you know, Sony Handycam. And so if I get hit with all of a sudden, you know, a bunch of rain coming down or whatever, uh, I can always use that in a pinch for emergency to cover my electronics and stuff. And obviously you can keep anything in there you don't want to get wet. So anyway, moving on. What are these? Button lamp adhesive LEDs. Oh, that's cool. Look at those. 
So it's indoor or outdoor, waterproof, shockproof, interior, exterior. Yeah, it's not the same as indoor or outdoor. <laughs> I just want to add more words on here for no reason. Ultra bright, press to test. Am I not doing that right? Oh, oh that, that is bright. Wow. These are super bright. I wonder, oh, okay, that's why. I'm, it's aimed right at me. So obviously wherever you're sticking these, they're going to be, you know, the light is going to be shining directly away from the face of it. All right, so it's like little five millimeter LEDs or something. And uh, they're just, again, shooting the opposite direction of where it's stuck. So obviously you could put it in a ceiling, you know, or on the ceiling or on the wall in a closet would be a pretty common spot for these. I mean, that's obviously what they're picturing here. That might be what I use it for too, since I have no lighting in my closet. But yeah, these are pretty cool. These uh, looks like they individually pop out as well. That's pretty convenient. So let's put the rest of these aside for a second. Take a look at this. Very cool. What was happening when I was squeezing it? Okay. So, oh, I see. There's a little paddle here, and you can see off and on. Pretty self-explanatory, so you switch the paddle all the way over, and what it's doing is it's keeping uh, the circuit completed. Once you push down, it's kind of cr uh, crimping it down, I suppose. Best way to describe that. All right. So yeah, I mean, it seems pretty easy to use. It's not as easy as like a button or anything. I wouldn't put these in hard to reach places, uh, but that's that's actually really convenient. I don't know if the batteries are replaceable on this. You can see two button cells. These might just be, you know, one and done type thing. It's in a, a clear plastic case. It's a pretty simple concept. And of course, an adhesive on the back. So I like that a lot. And that's actually what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna put a couple of these in my closet. All right. What is this? Hook and loop straps designed for organizing. And obviously you guys can read that. So these are literally just Velcro straps. Now what these are actually really good for, a lot of people probably find different you know, ways to use them with your gear, but I would use these with electronics. All right, When you have a bunch of wires hanging behind your TV, you got a bunch of stuff connected together, your gaming system, your DVD players, all that kind of stuff, um, it's really nice to tidy them up with something like this. Now these are obviously a lot longer. You know, these are once they're in the largest opening position, I guess is the best way to explain that. They can hold quite a bit, all right? They're gonna loop a, a, a few times around themselves if you're just wrapping up some cables or wires or something. But that's how I'm gonna use this, at least one or two of them. Because I do have, uh, at least by my computer, is a, a jumble of wires, so I will tidy that up next time I do like a, a big house cleaning or something and get behind the desk. So, very, very cool, very useful, and obviously for gear purposes, sky's the limit. You can use this for pretty much anything. So we are left with a real steel box, which is very exciting, but before we get there, let's see what this is. Like what you see, 25% off. Take 25, this is for Panther Vision, and that has to do with those little button things, which is pretty cool. I also got some lighted safety glasses looks like that's pretty neat as well i've never seen that before and of course you know lighted hats and stuff which you pretty much see everywhere these days but there you go if you're interested check out the website take 25 for 25 percent off all right on to the real steel should we look and see what model it is it says bushcraft zenith exclusive set for battle box all right so this looks like a separate mounting system. We have a, a snap here, all right, Kydex sheath. I'm liking what I've seen it so far. A little uh, ferro rod on the side, let's take a look at that first. How does this come out here? Okay, that's just tucked under, it looks like. Maybe it loops around. Yeah, all right, so that's looped around. And this is kind of Kydex fit. So it's snug in there, so we have our ferro rod. It's actually extremely secure, and they have that. I think that's how it was. All right, so let's get on to the knife here. Oh, look at that. This thing is looking nice. I am liking this. It's kind of, it's a little futuristic. It's not very traditional at all. Let's see, is there any markings on here for blade steel? Well, there's a marking in the back, it just says, uh, Ostap Hell Design. 
Heel? Hell? Maybe you guys can help me with that. I am not familiar with the maker. Alright, that's what I was looking for. There's the specs. 4.33 inch blade, 4.5 mil thick, G10 scales. So yeah, I'm digging that. That's really cool. And, you know, it's kind of refreshing to see a knife in 440C. I can't honestly remember the last time I saw that. You know, even uh, cheaper knives, if it's not an 8 blah 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 from China, or, you know, D2 or something, I, you just don't see a lot of 440C anymore. Let me wipe off this blade, because it looks like there's a little bit of oil on it. That is a handsome looking knife. I like it. You can see thick, thick uh, stock here. And then we have a Bushcraft style Scandinavian edge, which is strange on a more futuristic look. Now there is jimping on the back. It is very comfortable in the hands. So this is kind of a fusion between, you know, outdoors and tactical. I like it. All right, there's a zero edge on here. You can see just maybe a hair of a secondary bevel. So not quite a true zero, but it is definitely a Bushcraft style blade right there very cool and it's cozy it's nice and comfortable so yeah i will give this one a shot for sure i'm going to try to get out there even in cold weather this winter i want to do some more you know camp type stuff i don't know if i'll actually be camping outside but you know fire collecting uh, a ton more knife testing cold weather knife testing with bigger blades you know it's a little bit rougher on those blades you know chopping into trees and stuff that are half frozen or fully frozen in some cases but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I have the plans to do it, so you know, I just have to find the time. But that is December uh, Battle Box. Very, very cool. You guys will see a review soon on the Flatiron, as I mentioned before. Um, I definitely have opinions on it. Uh, I'm not going to say it now. <laughs> I wanted to start talking about it, but you'll see when I do the review. But overall, I like the box. It's very cool. Uh, a lot of stuff here that is useful. I'm looking around. And all different things and I can't see anything that I don't honestly have a use for. The dry bag I don't have a constant use for, but that's a good emergency item as mentioned before. Uh, and if I ever do need it, I'll be very happy to have it. That saw is going to be pretty interesting to uh, to try out. Just uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Awesome gear. Oh, and this, I forgot. Next time I get a cut, which uh, is usually from paper, honestly, cardboard. This stuff right here. I touch knives every day. Every single day of my life for the last 20 years, I've touched a knife. Uh, on some days, I touch 20 knives or 30 knives. But I don't cut myself on knives very often. I cut myself on paper. It's just kind of how that goes for some reason. So the next time I get a paper cut or a cut from uh, cardboard or something like that, I will use that. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let me know down in the comments section what you think of this particular box contents. And also, if you happen to have the Gerber flat iron. Uh, what you think of yours. It'd be interesting to hear other people's opinion. But I already have my opinion. I really don't want to spoil it. Um, actually, you know what? All right, I'll say this. I wanted to like it, but I just don't. And there's only one reason why. I'll see if you guys can guess why. But anyway, uh, that is it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Take care.